all failed. George, it's Dick. We've got the bugger. Get yourself down to Dewsbury, Nick. You've got him. Just get yourself down to Dewsbury before Obson does. They've got him. Mr. Oldfield? Where is the bugger? In there, sir. You all right, sir? Sir? Bloody hell, Dick. You don't get any danger. here. Steak and cake, sir. <laughs> Good to see you again. And you, sir. <laughs> Looks like Hobson's already on top of this one, sir. Let's break the news to him, then. You haven't given up, then? <laughs> no, boss. I'm only 43. <laughs> what happened? Got stamped on in a five-yard scrum. <laughs> Morning, sir. All right. Sir. Police 33, Halifax 5 and 6. <laughs> Mr. Oldfield! The chief rang me. He wants me in on this one from the start. He thinks we need a new strategy for catching this maniac. He's calling a meeting tomorrow of the SIOs of all the Ripper murders. Definitely Ripper again, then. Professor G's positive. 16-year-old girl this time. 60. Plenty of pros that age working in Chapel Town, sir. She's not a pro. Her name's Jay MacDonald. She lives a few streets from here. She works in the supermarket. You're telling me he's going for innocent women now? George. David. Would you like to... She's received several blows to the head, almost certainly with a hammer. And Jim thinks the initial attack took place in the road. Then subjected to a frenzied attack entirely consistent with the Ripper. No direct sexual interference, but brazier and top pulled upwards to expose the breasts. Pants lowered to just above the pubic line. She's been stabbed repeatedly in one place, just below her breastbone. You can see from the ground that the blood loss is enormous, indicating the extent of her injuries. You know what I said when they first come to the door? Your officers asked if I were Jane's dad. I said yes, no bloody murder of her stopping out all night and not telling us. You said, you might not have to. She'd only been out dancing. All she did was miss a bus. How can that happen? I'm very sorry. I 
I thought you only killed prostitutes. We're afraid the killer may have made a tragic blunder, Mrs. MacDonald. Mistaken for one. Our Jane! The pub she was passing, the Hayfield. As you know, it's frequented by prostitutes. In the darkness, from behind. The way Jane was dressed. I can't believe this. Well, I bloody got to Irene, cos I'd just seen her lying on... I could still smell her from last night when she kissed me goodbye. Look, I know I can't do anything to bring Jane back, but I give you my word that I won't rest till I've caught the man who did this. Thank you, Mr. Oldfield. Take a seat. Yeah. Oh, yesterday's murder has created public outrage. The previous Ripper murders have all been investigated by different SIOs. Now, I'm sure that both you, Jim, and John will admit that those investigations have been failures. It's time for a new approach. I have decided to ask one man to spirit the investigation of all Ripper murders. George. So far, the Ripper murders have all been investigated using the Leeds and Bradford method. In other words, an almost total reliance on instinct. Which might have worked if he'd been known to his victims. But suppose he isn't. Suppose the Ripper's a man who slips anonymously into red light areas to assuage his violent hatred of prostitutes, and then slips quietly out again. But what do you think we should be doing differently? Introduce the county system. Reconstructions, relentless house-to-house -house inquiries. We've been doing all those things. But have you been writing up the results? It wouldn't have mattered if you caught him within three days. But you didn't. As a result, you had nothing to fall back on. The information's lost. Names, addresses, descriptions. What we need is a proper system of record-taking. You mean a shipload of paperwork? We all know how much you Leeds detectives hate paperwork. No. I always thought that paperwork was important. But the question is, can you catch a murderer with it? Well, I don't think George is in any doubt, are you, George? No, sir. Oh, this man is not only creating terror on the streets, he's clearly becoming contemptuous of us as police officers. I think it's time we showed him who's boss. Like me, day, sir. Aye. Troops are ready to go. Even the leads lot. I don't think there's a bad feeling around from that corruption inquiry we did. I bloody know there is. Nah, Jim Hobson's working with you. The Leeds officers will support him. What kind of bloke do you think he is? Hobson. The Ripper. I still think he's a pimp. A kinky punter. That's not what I mean. What I mean is what goes on in his head. What a question, boss. First time I saw them PM photos, Wilma McCann. Knifed. Ten or more times. Emily Jackson stabbed 52 times with a screwdriver. Richardson, part of a guts hanging out of her belly. And as for Atkinson, John DeMell said he belted her so hard, her brains were showing. He's just a nutter. But not incapable of logic. Logic? He hates pros, so he kills them. The question is, why? Ooh. Maybe his mother was a pro and he feels ashamed. Your tea, sir. Oh, sorry. Have we got anyone to play Jane in the reconstruction? No. Oh, she's got right build for it. Speak to her, will you? <sighs> and try and show a bit of sensitivity. Susan, the reconstruction. We need a tart. You're it. You want me to be Jane MacDonald? Now, don't be insulted. I'm not, sir. Jane wasn't a tart, was she? Ah, but she got mistaken for one. Come the weekend, so might you be. Thank you. 
do you reckon he's from, then? County Mounty, if ever I saw one. Punsy. Gummersel. So, this is the great George Oldfield. A.K.A. Godfrey. God by name, God by nature. Gentlemen, as of yesterday morning, when an innocent girl was found murdered in Chapel Town, a state of war has existed between this force and the Yorkshire Ripper. But what do we know about our enemy? The answer is very little. He generally attacks late at night and in the open. We know he drives a car from tire marks found at the Richardson murder scene. He strikes his victims from behind with a hammer before mutilating them. And we also know from prints left at the Jackson and Atkinson scenes that he wears size seven boots. Not a lot to go on, is it? A pro-hating car-driving nutter with size seven feet. <laughs> now, I'm ready to make the greatest effort of my working life to catch him. I'm here to ask... No. To demand that you all do the same. We want to draw national attention to this man's murderous activities. He isn't a hermit. Whether he be a relative, a friend, a workmate, someone somewhere must know him. If you have any information at all, we ask you to come forward. night off with us lot here. They never have a night off. All right, love. How we hell is like all right? It's not that lot that's problem. It's wondering whether your next punter could be Ripper. Why don't you stop at home, then? I've got kids to feed, that's why. Two years this maniac's been on loose. What you lot done? Things are going to be different now. Oh, aye. We're going to make these streets safe again. <laughs> Hear that, girls? He's going to make streets safe for us. Is there anything you want to say to the family, Mr. Dobson? If you have any information at all, we ask you to come forward. The reconstruction of Jane's death was painstaking in its accuracy. Except for one detail. By the time the policewoman standing in for the murder victim had reached the end of her journey, a crowd of several hundred had gathered. Meanwhile, a few streets away, Jane's grieving family was still end. trying to come to terms. WPC Phillips got a cup of tea when she right got there. Now score. Come on. Gents. I think we're in business. Hello, West Yorkshire Police. And what time is that? What colour is I thought you should see this. Spotted by two witnesses next to the Afield pub. Ginger beard? Yeah, though the air's more blonde. Right, better circulate it then. I thought we should start an index on beards, sir. Good. George? I've just heard that you authorised a reduction in manpower. Yes. In the tide inquiry. I'm sorry. It's our most promising line of inquiry. 
If we just keep checking cars with the track width of the car found at the Richardson murder scene, the tyre patterns on the Ripper's car were very distinctive. 22 types of vehicle, Jim. 50-odd thousand cars. Woolseys, Hillmans, Cortinas, Corsairs. Well, we've already done the vast majority of them. Ah, but you've only done the easy ones. It could take you months to do the rest, because the car's been sold or scrapped or sent to auction. I've got to take men off it, Jim. I've got all kinds of new inquiries going. I agree it's slow going, George. But the point is, there's a very good chance that among the vehicles remaining to be checked, we will find the car and the killer. No, Jim. The point is, at long last, this inquiry is beginning to get somewhere. If the Ripper isn't quaking in his boots, he bloody well should be. Boss. What? He's just attacked another woman in Bradford. Sir? John. She was left for dead on waste ground. Someone heard her whimpering. Name's Myra Lawton. Is she a pro? No record with vice. An enthusiastic amateur. Oh. David. Hammer blows to the head, stab wounds to the back and stomach. Yes, I think it's our man again. Can I speak to her? She's just come from theatre. What are her chances? So what happened, John? Well, she'd been at the Mecca dancing, left about two. Bloke in a white saloon car pulled up, offered her a lift. Description? About 35. Short, dark hair, six foot, built like a brick shit house. Beard? No. Telling Zork, sure. Come on, then, Terence. Come on! So you picked up this pro on Lum Lane at half one, dropped her in Huddersfield, went home, arriving at half two. I've said so. Describe her again. Red hair, leopard skin trousers. You said tiger skin. What's it matter? Five oars butchered. You were close to the scene every time. A woman in a Bradford hospital's described the Ripper, and if you're not him, you're his twin. Come on, Hawkshaw. What's her name? I don't know. Hawkshaw. Every bloody pro in Chapel Town and Manningham knows who you are, so don't bloody kid on you don't know them. They just pay me for driving them. I don't ask their names. I'm just a bloody taxi driver. Relax, Terence. We know you're a taxi driver. So? What would you say are the tools of your trade? Huh? A taxi, a meter, anything else. What are you talking about? You don't ever have call to use a hammer, sir. No. Then what the bloody hell's this for? We found it in the boot of your car. I've never seen it before. Piss off, Hawkshaw. You're the Ripper, aren't you? No! Will it help you? I'm not sure. Well, what's up? Well, it's a bit different to the man you described last night. I'm sorry. I'm trying my bloody best. I know. You think I'm a pro? Are you? <laughs> no. But you... Help them out when they get a bit short-handed, then. I've got a daughter. You think I can't love her like you'd love your kid? You think she can't love me? What am I going to say to her when she sees me like this? <coughs> Myra's come up with a photo fit. Excellent. Let's see. Oh, he's grown a beard. Ain't got tall. Six foot four now. Still could be Hawkshaw, though. No, she's now saying that the car was definitely a Cortina, but that it could have been blue or green. Blue, green, white. They don't look that different at night. What are you looking like that for? Five murders and he's in the area every time. What are the chances of that? I don't know why he's not being arrested and charged already. Evidence, sir. Uh, 
What we've got is all circumstantial. Hawkshaw's admitted to being in the area, but that's it. What about the bloody hammer? Well, he says he knows nothing about it, sir. No, oh, aye. Well, forensic haven't been able to find any blood on it, sir. Ask him to look again. I will, sir. But we've checked his car, his clothes, his house. They're all clean, too. And his feet are size nine, whereas the Ripper's... I know size... what size the Ripper's bloody feet are. Release him. Put him under surveillance. He's still a suspect and a bloody good one. Well, don't just stand there. We have other suspects and other enquiries. Get on with them. Jim. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. This Cortina. Yes, I gather it now, baby, green or blue. I know. What I want to ask is, does the Cortina feature in your tire inquiry? The Mark I version does. And which version was used at the Lawton attack? The night watchman thought it was a Mark II. Which wasn't part of your inquiry. No, but he identified it as a Mark II Cortina because of the shape of the boot. Now, interestingly, the Corsair, which is part of the inquiry, has a similar shape. But if it was a Corsair, then Orkshaw couldn't have done it. Orkshaw's been released. I see. If the Ripper's changed his car to a Mark II Cortina, then your tire inquiry's pointless. Yeah, but if we find a person he sold it to, we can still find a Ripper. And he might have been a Corsair anyway. We couldn't afford the manpower for this inquiry before, Jim. But with this new attack... I just know we should see it through, George. I'm sorry. I'm stopping it. This is not to do with tyres, is it? It's to do with me. But I've tried to work with you, George. I've tried to keep Lee's detectives behind you. It's a necessary tactical decision, Jim, that's all. It's petty, short-sighted and a big mistake. And I shall make my view plain to Mr Gregory. Morning, sir. George. Sir. Thought you'd be a Milgarth. I'm still ACC crime. Plenty of paperwork to catch up on. I've been talking to Jim Hobson. You're the one who keeps reminding me of the financial restraints, sir. I need the manpower elsewhere. And I need to respect the judgment of a highly valued officer. Plenty of other work to be done. George, this is very bad timing. The Home Secretary wants to visit. Oh, it's, it's all right. Mr. Reese understands our difficulties, but we do need an arrest. I know that, sir. You look tired, George. I'm fine, sir. Good. But you should take some time off now and again. We need perspective as well as hard work. That goes for the other senior officers, too. Spend more time with your families. Do you all the world a good. pouring in. Not just prostitutes. 22,000 actions initiated. Three phone ringing day and night. I mean, if he's stabbing them there, he's attacking them because they're women, not because of what they do. Is that where he stabs them, Dad? People keep asking me at school. Gillian? God, she's got a biology O level in the morning. Well, sorry, love. I'm distracting you. I'm going up now, anyway. Night, Dad. Night, love. Night, Mum. See you in the morning. I'm getting closer all the time, Margaret. If I walked into a room full of strangers and he was there, I'm sure I'd recognise him. You said you were having today off. I have. Don't be up too late. I won't.
We think the original attack and disemboweling took place around two weeks ago. But he's been back more recently, moved the body and tried to decapitate her. Right, well, you better keep out of the press conference, Jack. Go. But we're certain it's him again. 99%. So why not go public? Because when it comes to court, if we've wrongly attributed even one to the Ripper, the defence will piss all over us. But the press think we won't admit that it's Chummy because we haven't stopped him killing again. We can't let newspapers bounce us into decisions, Jim. <laughs> The murder of the prostitute Jean Jordan in Manchester is a matter for Greater Manchester CID, not me. Yes, but surely the presence of Manchester officers in Leeds suggests that they regard it as a possible Ripper murder? All I can say is that there is no reason at this stage to believe that the killer has crossed the Pennines. So why is Detective Chief Superintendent Ridgeway of Manchester CID in the building? That's all. Oh, Mr Oldfield, why, why are Manchester officers in Leeds? Mr Oldfield has... They're onto it, Jack. It was bound to happen. Anyway, we've just had some good news. A workman found Jean Jordan's handbag. There was a five-pound note in it. And you reckon it was given to her by the punter who killed her? It's a fair bet. What's more, it was a brand new note. Find the man who's issued that note, and I'd say we found the ripper. Excellent. Come on. We've checked with the Bank of England, sir. The note in question was issued by a bank in Shipley. Almost certainly as part of a payroll distributed to one of several companies in the area. How many employees are we talking about? Around 6,000. We're interviewing every single one. So, if you find someone in possession of a note with a serial number adjacent to that found in Gene Jordan's handbag... He's either the Ripper or someone in that factory is. Hell of a task, George. That's the best lead we've had, sir. Jack Ridgway has brought over a lot of Manchester detectives to work with us. What if the note wasn't issued to one of those companies? Well, the bank think it was. If they're not absolutely sure. No, sir. Well, then, why not put out a general appeal, get people to look into their purses and their wallets? Those, those little slotted boxes Yorkshiremen keep on the mantelpiece to put the rent in and so on. The point is, we can't make a public appeal without admitting we think the Manchester murder's the Ripper. And you want my approval? Yes, sir. Well, you've always said we need to be cautious about what we tell the press. Well, I don't see you have a choice. But there'll be criticism for the delay. Well, the delay is not our fault. It's a Manchester murder. They're the ones who, who failed to find the handbag immediately. Let another force take the blame for once. Uh, some sausages. Mint. Liver. You do know how to cook this lot? Of course I bloody do. What, do you think I'm going to pine away just because my missus is buggered off? Veg. Ah, oh, get veg. Oh, we'll get us a bag of them French fancies you got me last week. There you go. That should cover it. What are you doing? Mr Oldfield says he wants all women to check their menfolk's bank notes. Watch it, Dave. Sir, Adrian Windows. Huh? From the Home Office. About the computers. <sighs> Dick Holland. Pleased to meet you. Oh, Neve! Get a bottle of Benelin for Mr Oldfield, will you? His chest's bloody awful at the moment. This way, please. Uh, sir. Adrian Windows. Oh? Uh, the computer expert. We agreed he was going to advise us handling the red light observation. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Look, can you handle it, Dick? I've got to see John Boyle. Oh, God. I'll tell you what I want, though. Come here. Three red light districts. Chapel Town, Manningham, and Great Northern Street, Huddersfield. We've already got OBS going. I want more than that. I want the best surveillance system technology can provide. I'll do what I can, Mr. Elfield. Sorry about that. He's a, a bit short on the social graces sometimes. Right. The OBS points are marked here in red. If a vehicle gets logged repeatedly in these areas within a short space of time, chances are he's a punter. And he gets a home visit. Aye. Problem is, we're getting so many. By the time we've typed up the details and we've phoned the PNC to get the owner-keeper record... Oh, we can improve on this. How about a direct link into the PNC? 
It's never been done before, has it? We'll find a way. You need keyboards and VDUs. You'll be able to process far more information. And use tapes and mics on the OBS, far more efficient. So you think we might be able to cope with every sighting? There can't be that many Yorkshiremen using prostitutes. Oh, I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, excuse me just a minute, please. Please, mate. Can you hook? Sir? Rugby, you pillock. My hook has bust his leg. Well, we played a bit of seven aside at school, sir. Right, you picked. Wednesday week, one o'clock. All right. And don't be late. Any chance of computerizing this lot? With present day technology, you're joking. Ask me in three or four years, we might be talking. Bloody hell. If we haven't got a ripper by then, they'll string us up in his place. Everybody's notes. We are, yeah. Sorry about that. We're asking everyone where they were on the night of Gene Jordan's murder. We're checking shoe sizes, cars, whether they've been seen in red light odds, and obviously looking for fibres with adjacent serial numbers of the one found on Jordan. Good. That's good. We're down to the last 700 now, sir. There's just Denby's, Butterfields, and a haulage company called Clark's left. Is Jack Ridgeway still hopeful? Oh, yeah. I mean, we found notes, not adjacent, but from the same batch as the Jordan Fiverr at six of the eight companies, including this one. So we could be looking at him now. You're through to BBC Radio Leeds Nightline. How many is he killed now? Five, is it? Six. Right, six. I know the police are doing their best, but it's getting so I don't dare go out at night. The problem is not knowing who to look out for. I mean, it could be anyone, couldn't it? So we're out at our works the other day asking where, all, where we all were on certain days. And because I couldn't remember, they came round our house and started asking the missus question. This old Phil keeps saying he'll catch him, but he's done bugger all yet, has he? I mean, the streets aren't safe anymore. This rip has got every woman in Leeds terrified. Twenty-five-year-old prostitute attacked in Chapel Town last night. Client refused to pay. She got out of the car. We struck her over the back of the head with a hammer. But she survived. We produced this. White, male, around 30. Five foot six, dark wavy hair, beard, Jason King moustache. Any idea why he didn't kill her? She screamed, and her dog started barking. But why should we take this photo fit any more seriously than the others? There were tire impressions found at the scene, similar to that of Richardson. What bloody good is similar? Uh, I don't know these photo fits. They all vary so much. Blonde hair, dark hair, thin face, fat face. Right, it took list. Thanks very much. You're most helpful. If we need anything else, we'll be in touch. Cheers. It's a lucky for shit from the rocky now, isn't it? I'm so sorry. That's the last from Clark's transport, sir. Peter William Sutcliffe. I'll bye by his wife and mother for Jordan. Housewarming party. Right. Put it in the system. How you doing, Jack? I think it's time to think about packing up. Well, let's have a quick one across the road, then. I mean, I think we've gone as far as we can go with this one. Seriously? We've been through the list. Some of the blokes we've seen three or four times. They've all got alibis. But if you've been through the list, you've almost certainly spoken to the bloke who had the fiver, haven't you? Whether we admit it or not, there was always a possibility that man wasn't the killer. George, I think we should call it quits. Keep in touch, Jack. There's only ever one line of inquiry. I bloody know that.
You sure you won't? No, I've not since 1966. 16 pound bender when we lost to Loughborough College. You never let things get you down, do you, Dick? I suppose I get it from rugby field. Let your head drop there, you're buggered. What? Something to show you might cheer you up a bit. The new PNC link is up and running. Should speed up processing the red light obs. Bloody hell, Dick. It's fantastic. We'll have him, Dick. With this lot, I bloody know we'll have him. Orange Triumph. F A Y seven O nine. Brown Road, CWY 72. Gold Granada, RAT 100. Brown Zephyr, GLO 70. BJ 879R. White Corsair GMT 492G. How long have the two of you been working this street? A few months. It's only temporary. I'm going to work college and Helen's going to be a singer. We always look out for each other. Sure. So how old are you? 18. Rita. We're twins, didn't you know? No. We were working near them toilets. Two punters came in separate cars, but they were mates. We agreed to meet back at toilets in 20 minutes. We always work like that if we can. We even take numbers. Do you have the number of the car Helen went off in? Yes, yeah, somewhere. Last one on the list. So, you each went off with a punter? Mine were right nervous, kept saying he didn't want any mess in car. Anyway, he managed it eventually, but it was near half an hour before he dropped me back. Helen weren't there. She may have got back first and gone with another punter. Yeah. I've seen you on telly. You're the one that's looking for Ripper, aren't you? We're in, weren't it? It's a Bentley. Belongs to the coal board. Who was driving it? The chauffeur. We'll take it to the executives to a doing Doncaster Tuesday night. Get somebody on to a job. I'll do this one myself. It was my mate's idea. He's a chauffeur and all like. We had three hours to kill a Doncaster. It's a lovely motor. Roomy at the back. You could do out in here. It was a bet like. He says to me, 
I bet we could get over to Huddersfield, have a bird each, and be back by the time bosses come out from dinner. Like. Practically play tennis in here. So I thought knew she were dead. I never hurt her. I never touched her. We can have a game if you want. Have you got any balls? <laughs> I dropped off at them toilets. I met up with me mate, and we went straight back to Donny. Have you mentioned it to the lady wife? Oh, please. I'll tell you everything. Don't tell her. Please. <laughs> He's clear. Rock solid for three at murders. What about his mate? Alibi two. But they did come up with a diamond. Just before they went off with Ritka sisters, they had a piss in the toilets. This bloke comes in and says they tell me you can pick up birds round here. What did he look like? Medium build. Dark hair. Beard? Well, one said he had, one said he hadn't. Here we go again. They saw him get into a brown two-tone Granada. Now, the one that went off with Alan said it was still there when he dropped her off. He'd have killed me, not Irvine, and told him where to get off. Oh, I love. You don't believe me, do you? Believe what, love? He tried to tap me up. Who did? I was walking past day Tuesday night and this bloke tried to tap me up. Are you sure? Yeah, it's always happening. My mum tells me to get the car numbers. And did you get this one? Of course I did. I told my mum when I got home. She wrote it on the back of a fag packet. Show me where you live. There's no such vehicle. Are we sure she's not just making it up? Well, maybe the kid just got the suffix wrong. I'd like to make an urgent appeal to the driver of this car. A two-tone brown Ford Granada. Come forward now. If you are innocent, you have nothing to fear. But being in Huddersfield, we were safe from Ripper. I cannot discount the Just have faith, Rita. It's a compact area. We've been systematically logging vehicles. There's every chance we'll have logged the killer's car. But it were wet, foggy, the place were crawling with punters. Sir, we've got the driver of the Granada on the phone. Are you prepared to give your registration number, sir? It's just that it would help us. Tony, get a trace on it. Peter, you take over. Try and keep him talking. I'll just put you onto a colleague, sir. If you could just bear with me for one moment. Sir, can I give some information? This is Detective Inspector Glenn Denning at Milgarth. We've got a corner on the line. We need a trace. Ah, right. Um, yeah, Tara, fast as you can. Hold on a sec, sir. I'm looking for a pencil. Sir, lovely motor, aren't they? Is it a gear version? Yes. Hey, lucky you. Right, uh, got my pencil. So what name was it again, sir? I'm not falling for that one. I'm just letting you know I was in the area, but I didn't kill her. Well, that's excellent news, sir. If you could give us a touch more info. Are you thick or what? I'm not saying any more. Arrogant bastard. And look, sir, we're not sitting in judgment. The fact that you were in that area is your business. What man hasn't felt tempted? I'm not a pervert. Exactly. Mind you, the way they flaunt themselves. What brazen hussies, eh? This brick of cat was asking for it. Yeah, asking for what exactly, sir? Sir? You're not trying to trace this, are you? <laughs> hey, you've been watching too many films, sir. Bugger off. Look, we just want to help you eliminate yourself. You'll have me to bloody well find first. They've got it to the Barnsley Exchange, sir. Address? Right now. Shit! I'm sorry. George? We've got it. The number the girl took was off a two-ton Granada. But it was JMA, not JNA. Who does it belong to? It's a company car. The broker has the use of it. It's a rep. Lives over in Barnsley. Get him in. Mr. Barker. Barnes will see I did. Are you the keeper of this castle? This seminar you say you were on last October the 1st. Where was it? I thought we were talking about last Tuesday night. I didn't kill her. 
Yeah, well, to convince us of that, you're gonna have to prove your whereabouts on certain other dates. I was in Bishop Stortford. Witnesses? Only every bloody rep in our company. I led the seminar. This is outrageous. My wife and I had people coming round tonight. What was it, sir? Fondue evening. There's a nutter out there killing women. And all you can do is insult decent people. You caught trying to tap up 13-year-old girls on the street decent. I didn't know she was 13. In Ibiza on MacDonald and Bishop Stortford on Jordan's. Right. Release him. But make sure his missus knows everything. We have done, sir. He's in here, Mrs. Barker. Right. Oh, Bridget, I, listen, I can, I can explain everything. Uh, I'd better tell Rita. They've got her in looking at photo fits. She's already been told, George. Well, we best get off to the press conference, haven't we? Stuff the press. Cancel it. You, you can't do that. Why should I talk to the press? They don't want the Ripper caught. They want him to go and kill him. He sells papers. The public love the Ripper. They want to go on reading rumours about him carving his initials on their bodies, eating their livers and kidneys, and God knows what other rubbish the papers print about him. Sir, we're trying to... I'm not taking any. It's Mr Gregory. Well, I trust you're able to get someone else to stand in for you at the press conference. No, sir, I... I cancelled it. What, because you were coming here? There were other factors, sir. It's no way to get the press on our side, George. Now, this is the very thing I wanted to talk to you about. I've been speaking to our press office. They feel that we're just not getting our message across. Message? I thought we were trying to catch a murderer. Well, of course. It's not coming across to Joe Public. His perception is that the Ripper is giving us the runaround. I realise that, sir. Now, we feel that a immediate offensive is needed. Now, you have heard of the Jimmy Young show. Now, someone out there must know who this man is. And we urge them to look to their conscience and contact the police. So far, the public response to the recent murder in Huddersfield has been particularly encouraging. We're very confident that before long we'll have him behind bars. OK, we're going to leave it there for the moment, but uh, we'll be hearing more from West Yorkshire Assistant Chief Constable George Oldfield about the hunt for the Yorkshire Ripper after Cliff Richard and Miss Unites. Times when innocent sleep for company and children... Mum, it's him. What, love? The bloke who attacked me. Same. I don't care. It still needs to be rechecked. So put it back in the system. I don't have to tell you again. Sorry, sir. What the hell? I could deal with you in my front row. Actually, sir, I'm a bit fussy who I get into a rep with. Now that, that is what I call a woman. Who is she? Oh, special. Name's Sylvia. Doing a bit of training down there. Lives out your way, I think. Yeah. Reckon I'll have to offer a lift up then. <laughs> <laughs> George! Went well with Jimmy Young, I thought. Oh, you heard it, then. Huh? Yeah, the radio one in the office. <laughs> Did I do all right? Oh, you're really great. Should have called him Eamon at the end. <laughs> Sir. We're checking out the last of the vehicles logged in Huddersfield on the night of Rick and we found an old friend. Not Hawkshaw. I thought he was under surveillance. In theory. In practice, it was a farce. He knew what was going on. He came to an agreement with the surveillance teams. He tells them where he's going and they rendezvous at agreed intervals. What sort of bloody surveillance do you call that? If that's the kind of thing that's been going on, I want it stopped now. Sir. The thing is, on the night of the murder, our officers saw him at eight in Osset and agreed to meet him in Halifax at nine, but he didn't turn up. We didn't find him again till midnight. Find out who it was. I want to know. Go on! But his car was logged 100 yards to the murder scene at 8.33, only an hour before it happened. 
Where was he on the Manchester murder? Claimed he took his mother to the Blackpool Illuminations. On the last attack in Leeds? Working in Chapel Town. It wasn't within sight of our officers at the time of the attack. We pulled him after both incidents, boss. Had the lads going bloody hard as well. Well, pull him again. I want to go at him myself this time. You can push bloody coincidence too far. And don't bring him here. Take him to Bishop's Garth, to the training centre. Top floor. Terence? I've got a fair to click in and I'll meet you there in about an hour. Come on. What? Yes, madam. I have some information about this man. The Ripper? He attacked my daughter in 1975. Oh, yeah? And where did this alleged attack take place, miss? In Silverstone. I was walking home at night when he attacked me with a hammer. He'd have killed me, but a car came, so he legged it. Right. Well, if you'd just like to fill in this form, we'll pass it on. Sorry. We're telling you she was attacked by the Yorkshire Ripper and you're asking us to fill in a form? Well, it's a special Ripper one. You see, we get people in here all the time with suggestions about him. It's incredible. You said it, madam. Pardon? Your daughter is the wrong kind of woman. The Ripper only kills pros, not innocent young lasses. And he works in the red light districts. Silsden's almost in the Dales. It was a vicious attack. Investigated by officers from this station, she saw his face. That face! Fair enough. Put that on the form. Stuff your form! Assistant Chief Constable George Oldfield. And I think you're the Yorkshire Ripper. I want to see someone in authority. Look, I've offered you the form. You can keep your form. The Ripper tried to murder my daughter. He threw her over a hedge like a rag doll and left her for dead. I want to speak to a decent detective. Ask Mr Hobson. He was the one who investigated it. I was depressed. I went to pictures. You told our officers you had a fair in Halifax at night. They were cancelled. To which cinema did you go to? Brighouse, the Regent. What film? Escape from Alcatraz. What time did it start? Quarter nine. So how come your motor was logged in Huddersfield at 8.33? I went there first. Why? There's a bird I know sometimes needs transport. She, she went there. A pro? Happen. Popular with pros, aren't you? Hey? Oh, aye. We've been asking around Chapel Town and Manningham. They all love you, don't they? Is it the service? Or is it the Cortina? All that room in the back? What are you on about? You let them shagging it, don't you? No! It's a quid teddy and I piss off another fag while I do this punter. Only sometimes you don't piss off. You sneak back and watch. Why aren't you married, Terence? Don't like women, eh? Might give you the clap. Filthy slags, I'm away on your back seat. Should we taught a lesson? No! Then why else are you carrying that around in your boot? Not again. Why, Orchard? I've already told them it's not mine. So whose is it? My my uncle reckons it might be his. He borrows the motor sometimes. Oh, the other one. It's the truth! This film. Escape from Alcatraz. What's it about? I can't remember. You've got one up of convincing us you're not the Ripper Hawkshaw. By proving you were in that cinema. So what's it about? These... these blokes who uh, want to escape from Alcatraz. My dog could have wear that to him. And do they escape? 
I don't know. I fell asleep. It was boring. You weren't there. I were. Tell the truth. I am. Are you the Ripper? No! Where are you going? No! I don't think so. Get up! Worse than Alcatraz, eh? Sit down, Terence. Sit down! You'll feel a lot better once you've got it off your chest. I didn't kill them women. You mean he didn't want to kill them? Maybe they asked for it. By being what they are, all's falling apart with pox. Maybe part of you feels sorry they had to die, doesn't it, Terence? Put it on. It's too small. Try it. to pieces. We'll find something. Blood, fibers, a knife. And when we do, it'll be so much better for you if you've already admitted it. Call us if you fancy another chat. Hold on, it's put in. No, bugger all. Let's put it all back together then. Make sure you do it properly. I only hoovered yesterday. found a cinematic in his house. I've had the manager go through his counterfoils. It was definitely issued for that performance of Escape from Alcatraz. He was there, George. Mr. Oldfield! Mr. Oldfield! I think you're right, Mr. Oldfield. I think I am the Ripper. Hawkshaw. I'm sorry. Hawkshaw. I get these thoughts, you see, about women. Listen! You're not the Ripper. I'm not. No. Thanks, Mr. Orfield. Thanks. Mr. Oldfield, Australian TV company wanting to talk to you. Put them through. 
sorry, sir. Oh, well. No, I think the chances of the Ripper striking in northern Queensland are negligible. Nor do I think he's likely to strike in Brazil, Japan or Russia, as some idiots have suggested. All right. Thank you. Well, at least we've eliminated him. That's one way of looking at it. It's the only way. Get stuck into the slot again. I suppose. Does Preston 75 ring any bells, Dick? Hmm. Letter here with a Sunderland postmark. Bloke signs himself Jack the Ripper. My purpose is to rid the streets of them sluts. Up to number eight now. You say seven, but remember Preston 75. Well, he means a murder, does he? Must do. Knows more than us, then. Just another nutter. Bloody sick, though. My one regret is that young lassie MacDonald. I thought I'd seen everything. Well, I saw what he'd done to her. Uh, is that all you can say? What else is there to say? you up was tall, blonde. That's not what I mean. What I mean is all blokes are the same. Deep down, they'd all like to do a girl in. Oh, come on, they're not all like that. What the hell would you know about it? Well, just keep looking. Try to remember. I can remember his voice as he pulled up alongside me. And what was it like? It was quiet. It was gentle. You're going far, love. I trusted him. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I was crouched down, having beaten. No more than an animal. <laughs> What's left for me after this? Everyone knows. No, they don't. Oh, of course they do. The woman that went with the Ripper. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> Can you feel the mark? Myra. <laughs> later than David. George.
You're a bloody dark horse. I thought Ruth was Rogan's bird. Well, she turned up at a game last week, took one look at me tackle, and her <laughs> legs turned to jelly. <laughs> Does he know you? <laughs> Pubic hair, fingernail scrapings, God knows what else. We sent the weather be straight away. So who's the poor lass this time? Pro called Yvonne Pearson, found off Arthington Street. Been dead weeks. He'd stuck her under an old sofa. Body had gone rotten as a pear. More overtime anyway, eh? We've got a car from McDonald, caravan from Riker. <laughs> oh, did you? Well, if you're that happy about it, why don't you go in there and have a look? He smashed her skull into 21 fragments. She had a five-month-old baby. I've had enough of this. I've even had bastards fiddling their overtime so they can make more money out of it. If I ever hear you, or anyone else, bragging again about the money they made on this inquiry, you'd be looking for a blue uniform and a tall hat. Sir. 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 Mr Oldfield. Not now. James Stevenson, Daily Mirror. You'll have to wait for the press conference. It's about Preston, 75. What? I gather you've had a letter from a man in Sunderland claiming to be the Ripper. How do you know? Because we've had one too. Saying what? That you lot haven't a clue and that he's going to kill again. Can I talk to you about it? There was a prostitute called Joan Harrison found murdered in a garage in Preston in November 75. This was two years before I took over the inquiry. And the murder was a possible Ripper? Shut the door. These details will remain confidential or I'll have your bollocks. Oh, I give you my word. All right, then. Head injuries were similar. Clothing arranged in characteristic Ripper fashion. And like Emily Jackson, she'd been stamped on. But there were dissimilarities. No stabbing. He'd bitten her breast. Her handbag was missing, indicating a possible motive of theft. Plus, the killer had had sex with her. And the Ripper doesn't? Not usually. Who was in charge of the murder at Preston? Detective Chief Superintendent Wolf Brooks, Lancashire CID. He liaised with Jim Hobson from... Can I speak to Mr Hobson? No, you bloody can't. I'll, um, sort out some coffee. Neve? So you think the author of the letters is just a nutter? We get thousands like it. Aye. Look at his maths for a start. He reckons there have been eight murders, including Harrison. But the one we've just found, Pearson, must have been already dead when the letter were written. And that would make it nine. But if he isn't the murderer, how would he know about Joan Harrison? I'm not interested in speculating. So his predictions, old slut next time, maybe Liverpool or even Manchester again, you don't take those seriously? On the evidence I've got, no. Well, we're going to publish in any case. What? We have a responsibility to keep the public informed. If you publish this, you'll get buggered all information from us for as long as this inquiry lasts. How about a temporary embargo? I want a year. <laughs> You're bloody joking. We're already inundated with loonies writing and phoning in. If you publish this, we'll get ten times the amount. We're here to catch a murderer and not help you sell your bloody newspapers. George. Yvonne Pearson, sir. You've had the details. Yes. We found her address book. There's a list of 30 men we think are regular clients. A two-month-old body, George. You're starting with a trail that's already cold. True, but there's some very interesting forensics. Hmm? Normally, you only get blue bottles on a dead body. But Professor G's found a different type of fly that you get in the countryside, in Cowmark. So, so now you think the Ripper could be a farmer? It's a possibility, sir. It's another labour-intensive inquiry, George. Our resources are not infinite. The cost of this inquiry has already topped a million pounds. Sir. 
Well, I have decided to ask a senior officer to form a new team, take a fresh look at things. Which senior officer? Oh, someone who already has a very good knowledge of the case. Oh, John Dormeo. Well, that's all right, then. Don't take this personally, George, but eight women are now dead. If we're doing anything wrong, then let's find out. Right, thanks, Jack. No, no, of course I won't make it public. Jack Ridgway says she was a prostitute called Vera Millwood, found in the grounds of Manchester Royal Infirmary. What were the injuries? Classic ripper. Circular depressed fractures to the skull, lacerations to the torso, including partial disemboweling, clothing arranged in typical fashion. Remember that letter from Sunderland? Liverpool or Manchester next time, he wrote. Yeah, but he also said old slut next time, didn't he? Well, she was 42 and looked older. Well, just nutter's luck, George. Well, I'm off to Preston. Talk to Wilf Brooks. This is the garage where Harrison was found? Yes. She'd been at a hostel. The caretaker there used to let her have a bath in return for a jump. Now, sometime after they'd completed one of their sordid little transactions, around 10 in the evening, she was seen nearby in Church Street. Soliciting? Wandering round pissed. Not that there was much difference in her case. Three days later, she was found in this state. Examinations revealed that she had semen in her vagina and rectum. The caretakers? No. The semen deposited just before she died was from someone with a B-secretor blood group, whereas the caretakers was A-secretor. Anyway, your man doesn't have sex, does he? That suggests it's not Ripper. We think he may have had sex with Ripper. Can I see the x-rays of the head injuries, please? Well, your pathologist report says he believes these were made by the heel of a lady's shoe. Uh-huh. I have to say I have my doubts. These indentations look exactly like those on the Ripper's victims to me. Aye. Well, I still don't believe you can fracture a skull with the heel of a woman's shoe. No, do I. But there are other disparities. Harrison's killer had nicked her hand back. Oh, the Ripper's never done that, has he? Wilma McCann's purse were missing. And then there's the abdominal injuries. The Ripper stabs them, doesn't he? Well, it's clear that Harrison's murderer made a frenzied attack on the abdominal area, albeit by kicking. The Ripper has also done this to some victims. Look, there is no way to prove beyond doubt Harrison was Ripper. I said so to Hobson in 75, and I'm saying so to you now. What up, y'all? You'll not be wanting dinner or anything. Carry on like this. There won't be a man in Yorkshire who hasn't had a visit about things he wouldn't tell his wife. Serves the buggers right. Yeah, He's just done a two-year stretch in Armley. Just the keys. I'm driving. Right, sir. Thanks for being so honest, sir. OK. As we said, we're not in the business of breaking up marriages. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Bomber. Next. Peter William Sutcliffe, 6th Garden Lion, Heaton. 
been logged seven times in cross area sighting. Seven? It's a waste of bloody time, and we keep clearing buggers like that. have been logged 30 odd times. Tracy Brown? Yeah? DC Marks, Keith Lee CID. I've come to have a chat about the Yorkshire Ripper. It was about 11 at night. I'd been with friends. I was walking back along here. She had these silly platform shoes on. They were killing me, so I sat down to take them off. Locked up. There was this bloke with a beard. And you think it was this man? That's him. We started walking, started to chat. He told me he lived at home farm. Is there such a place? Yeah, over there. Well, he didn't. No, but Tracy wanted to know that. We carried on walking and chatting. He sort of lagged back a bit. Thought he was blowing his nose or something. We'd reached here, turned off to our house. That's when he welted me in with hammer. A car came, so uh, he threw me over that edge. Then Carl went. Thought he'd come back and finish me off. But I heard him running away. There's an old gent lives in a caravan over there. She managed to get to him. He got her home. And you were taken to Airedale Hospital for an operation? Yeah. But before I had it, I spoke to Mr Robson. Told him exactly what had happened and gave a photo of it. And, uh, this is it? Yeah. Close, aren't they? Yeah. Your attack took place two months before the first Ripper murder. So what? A country lane, 14-year-old schoolgirl. Uh, the attacker obviously had local knowledge. So? Who says he couldn't be from Ilkley or Shipley? But it's prostitutes he goes for. The thing is, you see, you might have a physical picture of the Ripper, but we've got a mental one. And this just doesn't fit. But I'm not a liar. OK. I'll pass this on to the Ripper incident room. If there's something in it, they'll be in touch. With every day that goes by, I become more confident of success. I will not rest till the women of Chapel Town can walk safely on the streets again. Like, do we? Thanks very much, Mr. Shaw. Right, that's all the right. I thought you said you were going to catch him. We're doing our best. He's killed four more since you started. You're bloody useless. Silly bitches. Sure, I'm booked. No, I believe it. That's what he says to me, isn't it? Who? The letters. You and your mates having a clue. Come on, Rogan, there's people dying of thirst here. Right, I ask you to raise your glasses to Ruth Ford. A shit typist, <laughs> but an index is second to none. <laughs> and probably the best tits and arse in the incident room. Hey, <laughs> 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 Oh, you're leaving us then? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> well, come back and show up me, won't you? Yes, sir. Uh, leaving do, sir, for one of our indexes. Been on the river three years. Three years? We like to mark these occasions. I'll have a chat about progress. I'd like Jim to be in on it. Now, I know you've come to an agreement that you're I seeing Ripper and he's looking after all other crime, but uh, it would be good if he were up to speed with what's happening here. Of course, sir.
Sir, I know what you're going to say. Three years and we still haven't caught him. Well, I think the answer's another publicity drive. The public have become apathetic. Our instincts are quite the opposite. I want to impose a publicity blackout. The Ripper hasn't struck in ten months. Perhaps his lack of activity is because he's getting less attention. Uh, without publicity, he may become careless and get caught. Or lose interest and back up. Or wouldn't that be a good thing? It would mean the killer of Jane MacDonald and eight other women would get off scot-free. Obviously, I don't want that, but with less publicity, there'd be less pressure on all of us. It'd give your system the, the best possible chance to succeed. But it's a total reversal of policy. But detective work is a matter of tactics as well as strategy, George, isn't it? Good. Well, that's agreed. It's the right thing, George. We must always be thinking about our enemy, trying to get the better of them psychologically all the time. I never stop doing that, sir. I thought I'd put a couple of hours in. Well, Dick's duty dog this weekend. I'm surprised you got the energy for sport. What with tonking that special in every spare minute you've got. <laughs> More clairvoyance. Well, if they've really got second sight, they'll know I've been them and right in again. <laughs> Make me bend on it, will you? <coughs> what is it, George? George? Sunderland postmark. It's him again. Have a saliva test done on the envelope, will you? Oh, uh, and you keep this information to yourself. Sir. We don't want to get him back to Milgar. So what does it say? I bet you're wondering why I haven't been to work for ages. Says he was about to kill again. But... But one of your Curson police cars stopped right outside the lane. Saved her neck. Ends with another prediction. It won't be Chapel Town, too bloody hot there. Maybe Bradford's Manningham. Nothing to give it any real credibility, though. Hang on. There's details here about Vera Millward. Said she'd mentioned to him that she'd been in hospital. And had she? Yes. Jack Ridgway told me. I'm sure that's not being published. Better step up security in Manningham. And uh, put out a public warning. No. If this is him, and it's still if, we don't want the bloody press telling him what we're doing. Well, what about the mirror? The last letter was a year ago. The embargo was only for 12 months. I've not heard from them. Perhaps they've forgotten about it. Well, the Ripper's not news at the moment. Guess we'd better tell Gregory. And have him let Obson in on it. Whatever decisions are taken about this bugger, I want to be mine, not other people's. All right, John. George? All quiet on the Bradford front last night? Yeah. Good. Not that I'm surprised. More cops on the streets of Manningham than pros. 
Mr. Oldfield? Uh, look at you. <laughs> what is it? Girl, sir. Here. <laughs> well, since I held one of these. Have you got kids, Mr. Oldfield? Oh, aye. Any daughters? Aye, two. Well, one, actually. Gillian. She's putting in for university. Wants to be a dentist. <laughs> Sir. Tony, look. Oh, no. Where? Halifax. Halifax? 19-year-old. Name of Josephine Whittaker. Sir. George. Lass was walking home around midnight. We think she was attacked over there by the path and then dragged here. The ground's very soft, sir. The ripper's left some excellent footprints just here. Now, what's interesting is that the right sole is more worn than the left. George, let's get one thing clear. There is no red light district in Halifax. No, sir, she isn't a prostitute, nor could she have been mistaken for one. She was a clerk for the Halifax Building Society. It's a cowardly attack, sir, by a desperate man. Well, we've driven them out of the red light district. Right, and so do. We brought about the death of a decent young woman. Well, that's not how I'd have put it, sir. Wouldn't you? Seems to me that every woman in every town in Yorkshire is now at risk. So, what are the injuries? Two massive lacerations to the head caused by the hammer. Frenzied stabbing to the abdominal area. He also appears to have stabbed her repeatedly in the vagina. Stab wounds are extraordinary. Up to now, he's been using either a knife or a Phillips screwdriver. The latter leaves a mark like that, but this... I can't begin to imagine what kind of implement can leave a mark like that. George? They've got a positive result off the saliva on the last Sunderland letter. It's from someone with a B-secretor blood group. The same group as the man who killed John Harrison? Exactly. Just how rare is B-secreted, David? Only around 6% of the population have it. So the man in Sunderland and the killer of Joan Harrison have the same rare blood group? Yeah, but we still don't know for sure that the Ripper killed Harrison, do we? Plus, there's new evidence, John. The Ripper had bitten Josephine's breast and stuffed one of her shoes between her thighs. Whoever killed Harrison had done the same thing to her. I think the same man killed both women. Uh... There is some other news, George. The mirror rang. They're going to publish the Sunderland letter. They can't! I'm not having the whole bloody world told about those letters before I've decided what to do. You can't stop them, George. And when they do, I tell you, as a former head of PR, we had better all be singing from the same song sheet. Stick your PR up your ass, John. All right, George, you can say that to me if you like. But you can't say it to Gregory, and you bloody well know it. You should have told me about this letter immediately, George. We can't stop publication, but we can ask for a bit more time. That would help me, sir. We found traces of a mineral oil used in engineering, probably from the murder weapon. I'd like to check out engineering works in Sunderland. You phone the mirror, stress we need their cooperation for a little longer. If the killer is a Geordie who lives in the area, then we don't want to frighten him away. Sir. Though I must say that having taken the advice of Jim, who looked into it all those years ago, I'm still not convinced that Harrison is Ripper. In which case, the North East Link is almost certainly nonsense. And the author of those letters is a sick man who's made a few lucky guesses. The point is, the Mirror is going to publish soon, and when they do, we must seize the high ground. High ground? Oh, we flushed him out, you see, yourself. It was the act of a desperate man. That doesn't mean I think we should portray the brutal murder of an innocent girl as some kind of propaganda coup. Don't you get on your high horse, George. The reputation of this force is at stake. Bugger the reputation of this force. I'm sorry, sir. 
No, I understand. You're under a lot of pressure. But we have no choice. If your troops start thinking they're becoming a laughingstock, then, then what chance have they or you ever got of catching this man? I believe the killer to be white, 30 to 35, average to above average height, and a manual worker with mechanical or engineering connections. Where do you think he lives? He either lives or works in West Yorkshire, but he may have connections with the northeast of England. What makes you say that, Mr. Oldfield? I can't reveal that at this stage. The death of Josephine Whitaker is a terrible tragedy. But I feel that good will come of it. The Ripper has left vital new clues. And he knows how close we are. You obviously know more than that. That's the thing you Why are you trying to defend us? Mr. MacDonald, George Oldfield. I remember. I just wanted to see how you are. All right. Delhi Constitutional for the asthma. All right. Jen used to play in this park, you know. They all did. Ours, Kant's kids. Sometimes they even played in them fields where Wilma's body were found. Your kids played with Wilma McCann's? Oh, aye. She only lived three doors away, Wilma. I didn't realise. Jane was one of the last people to see her alive, you know. She remembered waving to her. Of course. Nobody had heard of the Yorkshire Ripper then. Did Jane know she was a prostitute? Didn't make any odds if she did. Women were a bit mad, but they were just another family in the street. <clears throat> Do you know how people knew there was something wrong? One of the neighbours saw Wilma's kiddies at a bus shelter at dawn next morning. Coats up with the pyjamas. Waiting for the mum to come home. I didn't know that. He didn't just murder Wilma that night. He murdered the whole family. He murdered ours and all. I just wanted to say to you that I'm sorry I haven't caught you. But when I promised you I would, I meant it. I know you're trying, Mr. Oldfield. It's funny. When a child dies, you remember him first as they were just before. But time changes that. I look out over here now, I can still see her. Sometimes she's three rolling in mud. Sometimes she's eight on her bike. I can't fix her as one person anymore. I feel guilty. I know. And then was Judith. She was six. Leukemia. Would have been about Jane's age if she'd lived. I'm sorry. You'll get him, Mr. Oldfield. How 
how many photo fits are there? Over 60 now. If it turns out to be Quasimodo, we'll have one to match you. <laughs> George! <coughs> this is Sylvia. Mr. Oldfield, heard a lot about you. Yeah, I've heard a lot about you and all. Frankly, I'm surprised you can still stand up in the mornings. Better be off, love. All right. See you tonight, then. Make your match there, Dick. But suppose you take the average of all the descriptions. He's white. He's around 5'10 tall, average build, size 7 feet, 30-ish, beard, dark hair. Some are giving him of ginger or blonde. I suppose that was the effect of the street lighting, though. Sodium lighting can make dark hair seem much lighter. I'm serious, Tony. There's a danger we forget what we do know. He's obviously someone who knows his way around the red light district, which almost certainly means he's a punter. Why haven't we picked him up on red light obs? Maybe we have. Maybe we should look again at the people already in the system. I'm not happy with the quality of alibis. I mean, we've been accepting alibis from wives, mothers. It's no use telling me this, Peter. Tell Oldfield, if you feel strongly about it. Sir, just been giving some thought to the question of alibis. What about them? Mr. Oldfield? Yes, what is it? A package, sir. It's marked personal. Well, give it here, then. I really think we should look again at some of the people already Someone in the system. Mark. Definitely the same handwriting. I was hoping to God it wouldn't me. How come? Well, the idea of a murderer who... Who what? Who gets into a personal duel with the bloke who's after him. That's for crap American films, isn't it? All right, you ready? I'm Jack. I see you are still having no luck catching me. I have the greatest respect for you, George. Good Lord. You are no nearer catching me now than four years ago when I started. I reckon your boys are letting you down, George. They can't be much good, can they? see myself being nicked just yet. Even if you do get near, I'll probably top myself first. Well, it's been nice chatting to you, George. Yours, Jack the River. No good looking for fingerprints. You should know by now. It's clean as a whistle. See you soon. Bye. Hope you like the catchy tune at the end. Ha uh ha. -huh. One of Dick's. No, thanks. I thought the letters were taunting enough, but this. Your boys are letting you down, George. Do you really think it's Ripper then? I don't know. I just don't know. Do you take that seriously about striking again? We've no choice, so. I'll get on to Jack Ridgeway. Put them on red alert over in Manchester. What about Gregory? It's bad enough with the letters. People trying to push me into decisions. If I tell Gregory about this, I'll get the same thing all over again. Well, it may be Chief Constable, George, but you know more about Ripper than anyone. Should be your decision. Thanks. All right. I may have to tell Gregory and some other senior officers. Otherwise, we keep this to ourselves, yeah? Well, you can trust Silbos. 
Just wish I could say the same about some of my detectives. No good looking for fingerprints. You should know by now. It's clean as a whistle. See you soon. Bye. Hope you like the catchy tune at the end. Ha ha. Frankly, I've never heard anything like it in my life. Well, it's bloody peculiar. But it still does nothing to convince me Harrison was Ripper. The point of today's conference is to canvass the opinions of senior officers from all areas which may be affected by the Ripper. I want us to be, to be clear in advance what course we're recommending to the others. I'm sorry to intrude, sir, but the chief constables of Northumbria, Umberside and South Yorkshire have arrived. Right. What's your feeling about this, Jim? Well, I'm no longer active on the Ripper, sir, and I shan't be attending the conference, so I'd rather reserve judgment. But you were SAO on two of the murders. You're also George's deputy. I'd value your opinion. Now, do you think we should make this public? Well, we can't. Why not, George? For a distinctive accent, surely somebody will recognize it. Well, the media, the public will go berserk. We could waste thousands of man hours scouring the country for a man who isn't the killer at all. Oh, we might have the Ripper behind bars within hours. I'm not saying we shouldn't follow it up. We can start looking for the Ripper up in Geordie land, but I'd rather do it discreetly. There is a clear threat to kill again in Manchester. I know that. But surely our responsibility is to warn the public. Our prime concern should be the safety of women. Well, that's bloody rich from a man who put WPCs dressed as us on the streets of Chapel Town. George, there is no need to get personal about this. Well, this is personal. It's me he's talking to, isn't it? It's me he's taking the piss out of. Couldn't we have a compromise? Keep it to ourselves for now. I'll step up security in Manchester and George can make discreet inquiries up in the northeast. We can review it again in a few weeks. I'll go over that. All right. Agreed. He didn't go into details. He was too busy trying to get an R on. All he said was that he was working at a place where there were a load of nuns and monks. He had a load of copper pipe in his back at car. And when this uniform couple appeared, he just panicked. <sighs> Practically shat himself. He whipped his trousers up and chucked me out the car. Bastard, it was freezing. Right, well, thanks very much, Maggie. See you out, will you? Do you reckon it were Ripper? Yeah, possibly. Ay, 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 ay. Looks like we'll have to add plumbers to the list now. <laughs> I've got to go back to Chapel Allerton. Take a statement off that headmaster. I hope some bugger's gonna sterilise that chair. <laughs> Who said that? Him. Truck a cannula. Vets and farmers use these to release gas from the abdominal cavity of sheep. I've used every conceivable implement. These two come closest to reproducing the wounds found on Josephine Whitaker. But they aren't the same. That's the mark left on Whitaker. That's what we get from the engineer's scraper. And this is what we get from the Troca cannula. They're similar, but sadly not identical. Shit. I'm sorry, George. How are you getting on with the boot print? Processing soldiers, sailors and miners by the thousand. The crucial question is, why was the right soul more worn than the left? I've just never thought about that. So, what happens? The cow is beaten forward into this crate here where it's stunned. Then the slaughterman stamps on this lever with his right foot, giving us the exact wear pattern we've been looking for. So you think we should start looking at slaughterman? Aye. Could explain everything. The agricultural connection, the boot, use of different tools, way it's him on the back of the head before it stabs him. I don't know why we've not thought of it before. Better add them to the list, then. We've got nearly everyone else. Taxi drivers, engineers, mechanics, soldiers, miners, sailors. 
Farmers, vets, men with beards, men without beards, big men, little men, George. blonde men, dark men, married men, single men, quiet men, angry men, straight men, kinky men. George. I feel so close to him, Dick. I just wish I could see his face. Fun for you, Mr. Oldfield. Oldfield. What? Did he say how he'd found out? Some reporters rung the office saying he understands we've received a tape. There's been a leak. Who? I've a bloody good idea, George. I've since been trying to get back at me ever since I stopped the tire inquiry. You're such a pragmatic man, George. I think you're being very irrational. There's nothing irrational about it. Only a handful of officers knew about that tape. The original was sent away for forensics. It's already passed through numerous other pairs of hands. It was Opson. Have you got any proof? And forget it. Now, what is clear now is that we have no alternative but to publish. Now, the press, no, we can't contain it any longer. The vital thing is to present this as a propaganda coup for us and not the Ripper. Very well. But if the decision to publish the tape turns out to be wrong, I'd like it to be remembered that I was against it. As I said in my opening remarks, we think this tape could be a crucial turning point in the investigation. So, without more ado, I'll play it to you. How does this bloody thing work? I'm Jack. I see you are still having no luck catching me. I have the greatest respect for you, George. Good Lord. You are no nearer catching me now than four years ago when I started. I reckon your boys are letting you down, George. They can't be much good, can they? The only time they came near catching me it was a few months back in Chapel Town, when I was disturbed. Even then, it was a uniform cover, not a detective. But this extraordinary development in the hunt for the Ripper was welcomed by Assistant Chief Constable George Oldfield. We know now that we are definitely looking for a man who originates from the northeast of England. Mr Oldfield confirmed that his officers would be working in conjunction with Northumbria police as their search for the killer extends from West Yorkshire to the northeast. I appeal to anyone who thinks they recognise this voice to contact us immediately. And in a further attempt to catch the Ripper, detectives have released extracts from the letters he's written. Top graphologist Diane Simpson has read all of them and submitted a report to police. He's a loner. He's a creature of habit. The word ripper is of interest. The strong downward stroke indicates a moralistic streak. The violence is reflected all the way through in the pressures. So, this is no hoax. This is a genuinely violent man. There's little doubt that even if this is not the murderer, and I believe it is, this is a very dangerous man. And so the right. Yorkshire Ripper. Paddle stations. The phones will be melting in about 30 seconds. Press conference went well, I thought, George. Thanks a bloody lot. I'm sorry? Don't come the innocent with me, Jim. I know how the press got hold of that tape. 
Are you accusing me of leaking it? Yes. I deny it categorically. I can live with the fact that you hate my guts, but to bugger up the entire Ripper investigation. Now look, George, you wanted sole responsibility for the Ripper, well now you've got it. Just because you haven't caught him, don't start letting your paranoia get the better of you. I know it was you. It's amazing, sir. Never seen anything like it. But is it all crap? Too early to say. At least we definitely know what we're looking for now, sir. What's that? Who do you think we're looking for, then? A Geordie, sir. Ripper's a Geordie. What makes you think that? It's what you said on telly. I said we were definitely looking for a Geordie. Well, that's what I thought you said. I said we were taking the tape seriously. I didn't say we were looking for a Geordie, because the Ripper might not be a Geordie. He might be from bloody Click Eaton, for all I know. Sorry, sir. You're a detective, Cleesby. You deal in what you know, not what you think you know. And if you don't know the difference, you have no place on this inquiry. Any of you? No, I know near a catching me now than four years ago when I started. And so the hunt for the Yorkshire Ripper, headed by Britain's most famous detective, enters a... Hi, Dad. Hello, love. Just been watching you on telly. Britain's most famous detective, they said. Is that what they said? Yeah, and that you knew now you were looking for a Geordie. They said that too? No, you said it. We now know we're definitely looking for a man who originates from the northeast of England. I said that? Yes. Well, maybe you were talking about the man who sent the tape, not the killer. They aren't necessarily the same thing, are they? No. I'm going to bed. Night, Mum. Night, Dad. Night, love. Don't let it go cold, God. Mm hmm? Your tea? No, thanks. I'm Jack. I see you are still having no luck catching me. I have the greatest respect for you, George. Good Lord. You are no nearer catching me now than four years ago when I started. Just had Doris Stokes on the phone again. All right. Ah, we're getting swamped with dreams and premonitions at the moment. Two dozen eggs and a bottle of vanilla essence. She's now saying the Ripper's name is Ronnie or Johnny and the surname begins with M. Better put it in the system. What? Filed under bollocks? <laughs> and four pounds of ice and sugar. Four pounds? What sort of cake is this, Mr. Holland? Wedding cake. Whose wedding? She battered me into submission. Oh, oh, congratulations, sir. Do you hear that, everyone? Mr. Rowland's getting spliced again. We set out from the mouth of the weir and worked our way upstream, visiting pubs, clubs, factories, you name it. And did you find anyone who spoke like the man on the tape? Well, not initially, but we got here to a place called Southwick. We found numerous speakers whose segmental pronunciation and intonation were exactly those of the man in the tape. So you think that's where he's from? I'm certain. He spent his formative years either there or a little place further inland called Castletown. And how many people are we talking about? About 5,000. Right, well, the answer's simple. We'll go all there, interview every single male adult. I think if you do, within a short while, you either meet the man that made the tape or someone that knows him. I'm very grateful to you, Professor. You're welcome. Of course, if he's a hoaxer, you'll have an alibi for the murders. I know that. Sorry, I didn't mean to tell you a job. Uh... I warned you in March that I'd strike you. Sorry, it wasn't worth it. 
Thanks for your time, Mr. Sutcliffe, and your husband's. We're very grateful. Yeah, tell him he can get back to his motor. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? He gave me the creeps. His explanation for being logged in the Bradford Red Light District's fair enough. But he was sighted 36 times. He works in Shipley. You'd have to pass through Manningham all the time to get there from here. The lead sightings, he said he was going to a nightclub with his missus. But what about Manchester one? He denies being there at all, yet he was definitely spotted. <sighs> and the rest of it. Size 8 feet, gap in the front teeth, same as Harrison and Whitaker bite marks. Dark, wavy hair, beard, dead ringer for the mule fort of it. I'm not happy about him. Graham, that bloke, Sutcliffe, Six Garden Lane, he was seen over the £5 note. So are 6,000 others. And he didn't have a Geordie accent. Yeah, but the lads who've been up to Wearside are saying the local boys don't believe he's from up there. You're really getting a bee in your bonnet about this one, aren't you? He's saying I'm getting excited over now. Get it tight, get it in. But don't hold your breath. We've all had good suspects, haven't we? No, I don't feel humiliated when I hear the tape. Even if I did, it wouldn't matter. My feelings in all this don't count. So what is your prime concern now? My only concern is to get this man before he takes another life. And I am sure he will try. The man seems to be almost taunting you. Do you agree? No, I don't regard it as taunting or boastful. The voice is almost sad. The voice of a man who is fed up with himself. Thought you were on the air. Oh, enough, see, Brittland, enough. We've had another two attacks put forward as possible, Ripper. You think they could be? Well, it's hard to say till we look into them. Getting four or five a week now. Plus all the women that have started phoning in to say their husband's the Ripper because he's lathered her. So we've still got only the same number of probables. Uh, mind you, John DeMille was always very interested in this Tracy Brown lass. Sir, Mr Gregory... Mr Flyer, George, let you know how pleased we are with developments. Absolutely. So, uh, what's the latest from Sunderland? They hope to have finished interviewing every male inhabitant of the villages very soon. What about the men that grew up there and moved away? They're going through school records to get names. Most of them will be traceable. And we're getting calls from all over the country. People putting forward the names of Geordie workmates and neighbours. <sighs> Sooner or later, someone's got to recognise that voice. Though it's odd none of the surviving victims have talked about the attacker having a Geordie accent. Perhaps they were never asked. Did you ask Tracy Brown? Tracy? Attacked in 75, possible ripper. Was your case. Well, she was pre-ripper. I had no cause to ask her about his accent. Maybe it's about time somebody did. Does this mean you really believe me now, that I was attacked by the Ripper? If you recognise this voice, I don't think there'll be any doubt. I'm Jack. I see you 
was still having no luck catching me. I have the greatest respect for you, George. Good Lord. You are no nearer catching me now than four years ago when I started. I reckon your boys are letting you down, George. There's no way that's him. But you were only 14. How can you be so sure? I just am. The bloke that attacked me, he had a beard, dark, wavy hair and quiet Yorkshire accent. Listen to it again. There's no point. I'm sorry, but you want me to tell the truth, don't you? Of course. But as I say, you were only 14. It was a traumatic experience. You still don't believe she was attacked by the Ripper? Well, Mr Oldfield has to be cautious. If we say an attack's definitely Ripper and get it wrong, the whole case could collapse when it comes to court. Doesn't make it any easier for Tracy, does it? She knows it was him. And she knows he's not a Geordie. We all think we know things about the Ripper, Mrs Brown. The truth is, none of us knows anything for sure. Not even me. Thanks for your time. I want to thank you right now for being a friend. I want to thank you right now. Are you all right, Mr. Oldfield? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't know about you, but welcome to the club. You're buying, mate. <laughs> See so it gets in as soon as possible, will you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Good girl. Tracy says he wasn't a Geordie. Then maybe it was the Ripper who attacked him. You better not be bloody saying that to you, Mummy Dick. I've never been able to make my mind up about that tape. You know that. Sometimes I'm bloody positive it's him. Others, I'm sure it isn't. Most of the time, I just don't bloody know. If the tape isn't from the Ripper, then who do you think it's from? I think if it weren't him, then it were a mate of his. The bloke on that tape knows too much not to be involved somehow. There is another possibility. There are people in this building who hate me. Bloody Leeds officers. What, to the extent of wanting to sabotage the entire investigation? I maybe. You want me to look into it? Yes, I do. We have to face the fact that there may be officers in this force more interested in destroying me than catching the Ripper. You're looking a bit rough, boss. Bit of a problem with me ticker. Nothing much. I'm seeing the quack about it next week. Why did you get an early night for once, eh? Can't. All this crap to sift. Not any more, you've not. Now, bugger off home. See you. you know what John DeMille said to me one night when we were walking out of here? <laughs> he says, what haunts me, boss, is suppose he's already in the system and we missed him. What did you say? Don't miss a bloody defeatist. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night. Oh. Sir, this should have come through with the others. I've uh, got a feeling about that, sir. Bradford lorry driver by the name of Sutcliffe. He's not a Geordie, but he's a dead ringer for the Moor Fort, if it. He was seen over the five pound note. He's got size eight feet. We get 20 suspects a day that fit some of the points. 
but he's a gap in his front teeth and he lied about being in a red light district. Look, you've done your job, Lapchu. Now let me do mine. He'll get looked at. Sir? God, you can't go on like this. Jane MacDonald's dad. He's dead. I gave him my word I'd catch the man who killed her. You mustn't blame yourself. How can I not? Shouldn't have been surprised. I've always known you can die of a broken heart. 23 next week, she'd have been. Here. You moved heaven and earth to catch him. <laughs> you shouldn't be so hard on yourself. God? Oh, give it here! discovered this afternoon in an alleyway close to Bradford University. There has been no official confirmation from West Yorkshire Police that this is the Ripper's 12th victim, but the presence of Ripper Squad detectives has led to intense speculation. George? I've been discharged. Well, is it? Definitely. Even the same peculiar stab marks that we found on Whittaker. George, they can't possibly have said you can come back to work. Where's Hobson? Been and gone. Is that where she lived? Yes, her parents have just arrived. What are you doing here, George? Whatever Hobson thinks, I'm still the officer in charge of this inquiry. All right. Let me quick, let me move. Hey! All right, all right. Listen up. It's on your ears. 
You know the drill by now? It's maybe number 12, but we treat it as if it were number one. So get your thumbs out, your bums, and let's get cracking. Tony, put in the usual suspects. Peter, so much for my bloody honeymoon, eh? Just unpack my fishing rods when you found. Had to leave Sylvia, England, and Rothies. Best place to be, but it's pandemonium here. The press has gone berserk. Gregory's been on, says the Home Office are playing now. There are feminists threatening protest marches. Oh, it's all with bloody me. Oh, that's not the worst of it. We've had this from the dialect expert, Professor Ellis. Oh. Says he and his colleague, name of Windsor Lewis, are now convinced the tape and letters are a hoax. They'd better not tell our chief constable. Well, there's more. Mr Oldfield was out at the murder scene last night. He's supposed to be in hospital. Wandering around like a ghost, they say. But you see what I'm getting at? Can you see me hormone rooting, pal? There's no need for you to come in, George. Must be in the shed. I can keep you informed. George? I heard you. <coughs> How did the leech reconstruction go? Oh, all right. Took six hours, mind, to retrace a ten-minute walk. What about this bugger saying the letters are a hoax? Who are we talking about? Oh, don't try and fob me off, Dick. It's in the paper. This chief inspector in Northumberland, Zacherson, he's looked up the original Jack the Ripper letters and reckons the, the ones from Sunderland are some kind of parody. Some of the phrases gave me fits. I will strike again if I get the chance. The bloody near identical. It doesn't mean he couldn't be the killer, though, does it? Could always have been a hoax, Dick. I said that from the start. Right. Well, that wasn't the only reason this Zacherson bloke's been questioning the authenticity of the letters. It seems we made it public years ago that we were linking Harrison with the Ripper. Whoever sent the letters could have got the info from the newspapers. Who oh, made it public? Hobson. Told the Yorkshire Post while he were working on Richardson in 77. Why didn't he tell me? You know what it's like when you're running a murder, George. None of us remembers everything we said to press. The mail linked them publicly, too. I'm just sick of being pissed about by people. Some of those Leeds bastards. Ever since I did that corruption inquiry, they've been waiting to pay me back. It wouldn't surprise me if a couple of them hadn't got together to send the letters and the tape. Well, we'll be looking into that, discreetly. Checking the pocketbooks of every officer who's ever been on Ripper. Looking at handwriting, shift patterns. We've found no evidence yet. What about these rumours of Whitelaw sending the Met up? He's coming in person. Oh, is he now? Should have gone a long way into special branch. It's all right. I've told Margaret I've gone shooting. George, what are you doing here? Thought the doctors told you to rest. It's still my investigation, sir. I understand there's talk of the Home Secretary coming. Yes, evidently Mrs Thatcher is very concerned about the Ripper, threatening to come up here and sort things out herself. Fortunately, I have been able to explain that we do have an important new initiative. Initiative, sir? Not here, George. Come to the office. Project R. It's still secret at the moment, but we're going to launch a massive advertising campaign. Why? Well, to inform the public exactly what kind of man we're looking for, encourage them to come forward with information. You want to catch a murderer by advertising? <laughs> I know it's unconventional, but uh, we've been offered a million pounds worth of advertising space free of charge. Frankly, George, the Ripper is running rings around us. We have to try it. I'm sorry I haven't consulted you about this, George, but till you're fit and well, you must accept that these decisions have to be made in your absence. Sir, this campaign says the Ripper's a Geordie. Is there any reason why it shouldn't? I'm aware of the rumours, George, but the tape and the letters are still the best leads we have. If we allow our faith in them to be shaken by an unprovable fear that they're a, a hoax perpetrated by one of our own officers, well, the public will never forgive us. You're on sick leave, George. Go home and get well. Inquiry's in good hands. And we would like to express our thanks to Keith MacPhail, 
and to Graham Poulter Associates for devising this remarkable campaign. And we appeal to the people of West Yorkshire and to the nation as a whole to heed its message and help us flush out the Ripper. Thank you. All across West Yorkshire, the posters have gone up appealing for anyone who recognises the handwriting or the voice to come forward. But even as the campaign got underway, women's groups in Bradford, scene of the latest Ripper murder, announced their intention to march in protest against the police's failure to capture the Ripper. Women are no longer prepared to live in terror of walking in the streets. We say to all men, you're the enemy. You're the ones that should keep off streets. As feelings oh, yeah. grow ever more inflamed, Deputy Assistant Chief Constable Jim Horst sought to dampen passion God through free? a direct appeal to the river. Let us not forget that these terrible crimes Seed are catalog. of You were looking for it. He has made it very clear that he hates prostitutes. Many people do. Let it go, God, for heaven's sake. How can I let it go? How am I supposed to sit back and watch them make a balls of it? Have you ever seen anything like it? Advertising for the murder. This is no way to get better. And now there's that. Don't start on about the drinking. You're as bad as the quack. I told him. I said if I hadn't had that nip of scotch when I had the heart attack, I'd have snuffed it. I'm all right. I'll get them seeds ordered. Fancy some croissants. We're beginning our march today, sisters, here at the scene of the murder of Barbara Leach. But we're here to remember not just Barbara, but all those other women who died because the police have failed to make the streets safe for them. Yeah, yeah, right. Because men everywhere have collaborated with that failure. Yeah. And all those women were innocent. Were. None of them deserved to die. Let's yeah. Show them your tail. That'll we impress We remember them. then. Wilma McCann, murdered October 1975. Emily Jackson, murdered January 1976. I hope you got this straight about Irene the route. There's no Richardson, way you're passing through Manningham. Murdered you can't January stop us. <sighs> Sorry, love. You either go up the A647 into Wibsey or you're going bloody nowhere. Luke, we want to march through city, not out of it. Tough titties. <laughs> Come on, gents, we listen to the tape, please. I can't see what's on. Just listen to the tape. Come on, fellas, give us a break. Started some Gloxinia off. Oh, I love Gloxinia. Thank you. Well, now you can start talking shop. But not for too long. Uh, so. Well? Stainthorpe's convinced he's got another ripper attack in Ilkley. Gregory doesn't want it publicly confirmed, though. Doesn't want to tarnish the advertising campaign. Mm. Anything come of that yet? Mountains of crap. And Gregory's asked Scotland Yard to come up and review what we're doing. Press have been baying for it. He didn't have much choice. Is there any good news? Well, there might be. Jack Ridgeway's just been on. Someone at the bank's had another think about the five pound note inquiry. I think we should reopen it. Why? Not right sure. We need to talk to Jack about that. I will do. Anything else? No, I don't think of any other news, obviously. No. 
What? <clears throat> You're not. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> She's near seven months gone. We had a little bet. Dick said, let's just see if he notices. <laughs> Typical bloody Holland. Well, congratulations, anyway. Kids are important, aren't they? The old bloody point, if you ask me. Got three, haven't you? That's right. Growing up too fast. Gillian's at college already. What, that little slip of a girl? No, that's... Uh, that's Judith. Our first. She died. Leukemia. God, sorry, George. It's all right. It was a long time ago. Basically, the bank have taken another look at the precise path the £5 note took between being printed at the Bank of England and being issued in a pay packet. They reckon now that the five were found on Jordan could only be issued to one of three firms and not the eight they originally thought. Which firms? Uh, Butterfields, Denby Engineering and Clark's Transport. How many employees are we talking about? 300. Bloody hell. It was 6,000 before. Quite. So we're re-interviewing the 300. Uh, could you send the next man in? Uh, Peter William Sutcliffe. OK, mate. Cheers. Hey, Pete. They think you're the ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Do they think we're doing anything wrong, then? What boys from the yard? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a cheek to complain. I've not called their ripper yet. <laughs> anyway, they're going home soon. Yeah, I think home. All ordered themselves suit lengths to take back with them, apparently. Best Worsted. <laughs> Mr. Holland. <laughs> Phone. Oh. Uh... Dick Holland. <laughs> right. Right, I'm on my way. George. Sylvia, they've uh, taken her into hospital. She's gone into premature labour. I see. So do you mind? No, no, of course. Dick, it'll probably be all right. You delivered to Sunderland occasionally, I understand. Now and again, yes. Were you there on the 9th or the 13th of March, 78, or the 23rd of March, 79? It'd be a book if I were. You understand that on those dates, certain letters were posted? Yeah. I understand you've been seen by police officers once before, Mr Sutcliffe. That's right. And you gave a handwriting sample on that occasion? Yeah. It went out like Geordie letters. So I believe. Thanks, Mr Sutcliffe. Can you send the uh, next man in, please? Asleep, so uh, if you're all right, I'll. Oh, aye, of course. You'll get back to her. Unless you want to talk or. No. No, no. I'll, I'll get back. Jimmy! Just a little bit. Oh. Jimmy! You got 
a cig? No, I'm out. Do you want me to go and get some? I'll go. Here. Try and get to go down, will ya? I'm getting nowhere. Oh, bloody fireworks. Well, then. What's up with you, then? The uh, Ripper investigation has had more downs than ups, but I can say that the advertising campaign which you devised for us has been an unqualified success, and we are delighted to express our appreciation in this way. Thank you again, and I hope you found the roast beef and Yorkshire pud to your liking. <laughs> Gentlemen. credence to the uh, view that the Ripper's packed it in? Well, I wouldn't rule it out, would you, Jim? No, sir. But there does seem to be a lot of possible Ripper attacks being reported in the papers. Not reported, but not confirmed. No, I think this spade of reports merely reflects high public interest in the Ripper. It is possible that the campaign has intensified public vigilance to such an extent he feels it just isn't worth taking the risk. So we haven't so much flushed him out as worn him out, then? <laughs> So you're still convinced as ever of the authenticity of the letters and tape? Oh, I'm sure we were right to give them maximum publicity. Does that mean yes? Well, all I can say is that we still have a, a gut feeling about them. Even though it's now clear that all the details that gave them credibility could have been gleaned from newspapers? There's no doubt that we had to go public with the tape when we did. Whatever private doubts we may have had at the time, the public would never have forgiven us if we just sat in it. What private doubts? You never mentioned any private doubts to me. As you well know, George, I was never party to any formal discussion about publicising the tape. You were party to a million pound advertising campaign expressing belief in its authenticity. You're telling us now you had doubts when the tape arrived? Where were those doubts when you went round Leeds unveiling bloody posters saying the Ripper doesn't want you to read this? There's no way to conduct yourself in public, George. I'd just like him to tell us which side of the bloody fence he's on. Like every other prudent officer on this force, I've always kept an open mind about the tape. Until it became politically necessary to do otherwise. That's unfair, George. I've always argued very strongly that no one should be eliminated as a suspect by virtue of them not having a Geordie accent. Oh, aye. That's not what it says on those bloody posters. Oh, gentlemen, please. If I'd known when the tape arrived that we'd already publicly linked Harrison with the Ripper, we might never have embarked on this wild goose chase. Oh, so you're now saying that the Geordie connection is a wild goose chase? Of course chase. you're not, are you, George? Oh, I am confident that events will bear out our faith in that tape. Oh, as Jim says, the Ripper's continuing lack of activity is a sign that we're, we're winning. Or perhaps that we've already won.
Dick Holland. There's been an attack just down the road in Willwood Avenue. Ripper. Could be. Bloody cheek. Practically on my own back doorstep. Sir. Oh, we're here within minutes. It must be bloody Odina. Gone out. There's been an attack in town, Wellwood Avenue. The Ripper? I think it might be. Are you alright? No. And he had a beard, you say? Yeah. What did he hit you with? I don't know. Teresa. Teresa, what's happened to you? I'm DC Garrett. She's had a bit of a knock on the head. Who did this? That's what we're trying to establish. Has the doctor been to see her yet? So, you're walking down the path. You shut up! Where's the bloody doctor? There's no doctor available. It's bonfire night. I don't care. My daughter needs a doctor. Bloody find one. Well, go on, don't just stand there. Find one! opson has been trying to get back at me ever since I stopped the tyre inquiry. If he's got any doubts about the tape, he's got to voice him. Whose side are you on? Yours. Dick's. For both these sakes, I'd like the bloody ripper caught so we can all have a bit of a life again. What? Dick's right. You don't have to call a spade a spade. Call them bloody shovels, usually. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, you went public on the tapes. There's no going back. It's got to get on and finish the job. Before the job finishes me. Oh, don't be silly. I've got congestive heart failure. God, I'm sorry, George. Didn't know it were that bad. You won't tell anyone, will you? They're taking her to Chapel Allerton to get a skull plated over. What's the doctor saying? Head injury's consistent with a hammer. We haven't got the exact diameter of the holes yet. I haven't seen the X-ray. If that's not a ball hammer, I'm a garden gnome. She's not a pro, though. She doesn't have to be a pro to be a ripper victim. You're not a division should know that by now. We do, sir, but every woman who gets attacked these days wants it to be Ripper. We have to filter them somehow. Well, don't bloody filter this one, cos it's him. How are you, anyway? All right. I, uh, I never had a chance to say sorry about the baby. Not a lot to say, is there? Thanks. Can I ask you something, George? Do you ever get over it? Do you ever get over Judith? No. I used to think I got used to it. Now I'm not even sure of that. Well, what's changed? These murders. Wolf MacDonald was right. The Ripper doesn't just kill women. He murders families. You try not to think about it, but... the pictures won't go away. Jane MacDonald. Wilma McCann's kids wandering the streets in their pyjamas looking for their mother. The leech parents. So dignified. So, Nick, what's the news? It's Ripper. I'm positive. 
We were that close to catching him, that close. And she's alive, but she's lost a lot of blood. Whoever did it must be covered in it. George, what's all this for? Incident room floor. It's collapsing. Eh? Talk to him to paper we've got. Come on, I'll show you. The surveyors have told us we have to shift everything to the edges of the room. Eh? Right. Use the basement. We have to use cadets to fetch stuff up and down. Bloody hell. Please be. Cadets? We're already having to employ the sick, the lame, and the bone bloody eyed. Well, we have to take who we can. Be death to your bloody career working on the Ripper. I still say there's nothing wrong with our system. The problem is too much paper. No, the real problem is the sexual behaviour of Yorkshiremen. When we started these pro-ops operations, we were told these graphs would rise steadily, to go all the punters into the system, then flatten out like this. Whereas what actually happened is this: it goes up and up. As far as I can make out. The entire male population of West Yorkshire must be using prostitutes. Can't you ask the Home Office again about a computer? Oh, we've uh, we've got a letter from them. Yeah. It says they've got one now that'll do the job. Well, let's have it installed. It says here we can have the thing tomorrow, but it would take two years to write a program and load in all the info we've already got. So, Theresa Sykes' photo fits come in. How much credence do you think we should give this, sir? Huddersfield Division is still saying it could be a domestic. Well, I think it's Ripper. Then we need to take it seriously. She got bloody close to him. Aye, uh, but no closer than the women that gave us these two photo fits. She has him with, what, dark hair, beard? Yeah, and no Geordie accent. You know what I think. Geordie or no Geordie, we're almost there. One last push and we'll have him. So. It's me that did you. I've told him, bloke, that did me out a beard. I told him I chased the bastard. You don't believe me? Well, they ought to believe me. I'd know if my own fella did me. I don't think they do believe you. Why? Jimmy? They say you've got brain damage. They say you, you're an unreliable witness. Ask him in. I'll bloody tell him who's got brain damage. Shh. You'll make it worse for me. It'll be all right. Cos you know I didn't do it. You'll be home soon. Things will be back to normal. Jimmy. I'm not coming home. I'll go to my mum's for a bit. Why? I just... I need to feel safe. Is it because I chased him? Instead of stopping with you? No. Then what, then? I thought you'd love me. I do. What is it? What's changed? Uh, I, I don't know. It's something... I don't know. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy!
Mum says he's taking her on a cruise after Christmas. Does she now? Are you? Have you three kids to get through school and college? Who says there's money for cruises? She said you promised. You don't break promises, do you? Not if I can help it. Do you think you'll have caught him with Christmas, then? Hey, come on. You'll be late. My biology teacher told me to tell you that he thinks it's a transvestite. Tell him thanks for the tip-off. See you tonight. All right. Jacqueline. And they're the worst injuries yet. Professor G reckons he stabbed her through the eye. I know. Mrs. L. I'm sorry. Sorry? Sorry? How can you say that? I understand how you feel. Don't! Don't say that. I feel. I've just lost my daughter. How can you possibly understand what I'm feeling? Don't you think this is bad enough without her to put up with pity from the likes of you? If you were really sorry, you would have caught whoever did this years ago. You're just useless. Useless. You're bloody useless. There's nothing. Nothing you can ever do to put this right. We deeply regret that yet another innocent life has been lost. Can you confirm that her handbag was found the night before, that the officers failed to search the scene properly? Has she been formally identified? I can't comment on that at this moment in time. This man is clearly mentally unstable and can flip at any time. Can you confirm reports that Miss Hill didn't die in Egypt? I can't confirm or deny that. say that Leeds and Bradford are cities under siege. I would appeal to the women of both cities to remain calm. Would your wife remain calm? This is the first mistake to remain. Please! Men on the streets! 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 
Thanks, sir. George, this isn't going to be easy. If you're going to ask me to resign, don't bother. I won't. You either let me go on and catch him, or you sack me. George, the pressure from above is... is overwhelming. Ah. Uh, we're all mindful that your health is not what it was, and with that in mind, I have decided to, well, to move you sideways. Sideways? I'll make you ACC support services. A uniform job? In charge of dogs and horses? No, it's, it's the best thing you, what, uh, two years to retirement? Much less stressful? No, it's an ideal solution. I'm sure your, your wife and family would approve. And who's gonna do my job? Jim Hobson is the only man with the experience and knowledge to run the Ripper. You mustn't take this personally, George. This uh, thing has become the biggest manhunt in criminal history. No one could have tried harder. Is that all, sir? Except to say, uh, oh, thanks for all you've done. I therefore regret to inform you that your tender for the provision of meat to our mobile catering services has been unsuccessful, yours faithfully. deserted, pubs and clubs empty. As morning broke and no reports of serious violence against women were reported, the city breathed a collective sigh of relief. Temporary Assistant Chief Constable Jim Hobson spoke of his confidence that the Ripper could soon be caught. Oh, I'm certain it can be done. Hopefully some officer will be in the right place at the right time and give us the break we need. On balance, I believe that the man who sent us the tape is the Ripper. But we will not eliminate any suspect because he has not got a Geordie accent. Thought you were going to help me put this thing on. Surely the whole basis of your campaign to catch the Ripper 
is that the killer and whoever sent the tape are the same man. Happy New Year, George. Happy New Year! <laughs> Been out after Robson. Come on, win out, love. For the kids. Sorry we didn't get them to you for Christmas. Thanks. You might find something liquid for yourself in there and all. Come in, then. No, I can't stop her. Said I'd have a leg of lamb ready for him when he gets home. He's working today. Ripper doesn't stop for public holidays, does he? Yeah. He's not bloody given up, you know, Dick hasn't. No. Neither should you. I'll catch the bastard for you. then? No. I'm sorry. The free phone number you require is not available. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Discontinued. The phone number you require is no longer available. You don't think he still wants to talk to you, do you? I don't know. Well, what would you say if he did ring you? Oh, I don't know. I'd just say, stop. For God's sake, no more dead women. No more broken-hearted parents. You did your best. I got it wrong. I thought there were... Two types of victims, the innocent ones and the prostitutes. There was no difference. None of them deserved to die. Go back to bed, Dad. Uh, in a bit. Night, then. Come on. Relax. Oh, there's no need to be nervous. Look, I'll show you. I'm sorry. Well, what is it? <sighs> you worried about your wife? That number plate and then watch that back door. Look, what All is right. it? Jesus! What's going on? He's my boyfriend. Oh, yeah, and I fell off a Christmas tree. G oh, it's you, Olivia. Come on, let's have you. You know the drill. Back of that car. Can you get out, please? Is this your car? Yes. Can you tell me your name? Williams. Peter Williams. A Skoda? Roger. OK, thanks. Out. Sarge. Right there. Something wrong. Number plate should belong to a Skoda. Oh, where are you going? Busted. We'll be quick about it. Okay. 
to have him in. Done a Sarge. Peter Williams, my arse. His name's Peter William Sutcliffe, and he's from Bradford. He reckons he nicked those plates from a scrapyard near Murfield, because he's due on a drink drive charge next week, and his insurance has lapsed. Anyway, not our problem. Which nick does Murfield come under? Yes, Sutcliffe. They kept him in Sheffield overnight and we fetched him up first thing. His missus has been told that he's been detained for questioning over the theft of number plates. That's with standing orders to let you know about anybody picked up in questionable circumstances with prostitutes. I thought I'd better let you know. What's he like? He's white. 5'10", dark afro hair, Jason King beard. What do you reckon? I reckon you should clock him. Right. Thanks, mate. Says. Yeah. Fancy trip to Dewsbury. According to our reports, you've been seen twice in connection with our £5 note inquiry. I came to our work site. And on the second of those occasions, you were asked about whether you were in Sunderland on certain dates and to provide an example of your handwriting. Yes. And do you also remember, on the second of those occasions, being asked about whether you ever associated with prostitutes? I think so. And do you remember denying it? I think so. Yeah, last night you were found with a prostitute in your car. I'd had a row with wife. I wouldn't have done it normally. You won't tell her, will you? We're not in business of breaking up managers. Just be straight with us and there'll be no problem. Nothing to get too excited about, but I'll write it up, get it into our system. You want us to release it? You'll be charging them over stolen plates first, no doubt. Well, you're the Ripper squad. You know best. Hold on. I've read our officer's notes on that bloke. He looks like a decent suspect to me. This is Detective Chief Superintendent Clark. With respect, sir, we get better ones than this all the time. Oh, really? We've got enough suspects at Milgarth to fill Ellen Road. I don't care how many you got at Milgarth. I've got one here. And I'm not happy with him. He might not have a Geordie accent, but until I'm satisfied he's been properly looked at, he's going nowhere. Can you explain how your car could have been seen in Manchester? I left it in car park at Bradford Library. Maybe somebody nicked it, took it to Manchester. And put it back on the very same spot in Bradford? Where were you last bonfire night? At home. All now. Give me wife. Sarge, what are we on tonight? Straight after parade, we've been back up Melbourne Avenue. Yes, sir. That bloke we found in car with Livia Reavers. They're still holding him at Dewsbury. Ripper squad's talking to him. So what do you want to go back up to Melbourne Avenue for? He asked to go for a piss, didn't he? So what? So look over here. Another piss, didn't he? When we took him to the station. Sorry to disturb your beauty sleep, but um, the suspect at Dewsbury. Things you know about him. Know what? Well, his name's Peter William Sutcliffe. And when he was arrested, he had a ball pain hammer with him.
Mrs. Sutcliffe? Yes. Could we have a word, please? When he asked what is there to see here, Paul made a small mistake. He left out S. What is there? Was gibt es? Was gibt es here to see in? Paul also used this expression, es gibt, there is, when he talked about love. Understand you're away, your husband's been held at Dewsbury Police Station. In German, you can't just you know why? say, there's too much noise. You've also got to say where it is too noisy. I said, do you know in why? In London, gibt es zu viel Lärm? What is there? Was gibt es? Was gibt es here to see? Could you turn that thing off, please? Paul also used this expression, es gibt, there is, when he talked about London. Could you tell me where you were last bonfire night? At home. On bonfire night? We were going to a bonfire party. Only my husband rang to say he wasn't going to be able to make it. Did you say why I couldn't make it? No. What time did he get in eventually? Around ten, I think. Could we have a look in your kitchen? If you want to. Missing Mrs. Sutcliffe. I think we may have just found it for you. Can we have a look in your garage, please? Take that. to being detained over the theft of some number plates. I should advise you that your husband has also been interviewed in connection with a more serious matter. Once that interview continues, I think it's best that you wait at the station. We'll take you now. Do you hear what I said? Yes. Well, then, do you want to lock up? Bloody hell, boss. Is this it? Well, I did give you a hair on. I thought this a hundred times before in this investigation. But you are going to phone Mr. Robson. Well, I'm going to make a phone call, all right. But not to Robson. Failed. George, it's Dick. We've got the bugger. You've got him. Just get yourself down to Dewsbury before Robson does. They've got him. Smith and Ball to have a go at him. Remember, that's going to get about bonfire night. Where were you last bonfire night, Peter? I talked to the blog. I was at home with my missus. Well, you didn't go out anywhere? No. 
I'd have remembered. If I'd gone out, I'd have remembered seeing bonfires. Well, I don't. Has he got a Geordie accent? He's from Bradford. Has he got a Geordie accent? Do you recall where you were 12 days later? On the evening of the 17th? 17th? There was a serious incident in Leeds on the 17th. A student called Jacqueline Hill was murdered. I was with my wife. Is he in the system? Who oh, are uh, Been interviewed nine times, it was discovered so far. And there may be more. Nine times? So it worked, didn't it? The system worked. Has he said anything about me? I think you went to Sheffield with the sole purpose of picking up a prostitute. That's not true. I think you put the false plates on to conceal the identity of your car in a red light district. That's not true. Why'd you leave the car to go behind that fuel tank? To so urinate. I think you went there for another reason. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think you're in very serious trouble. I think you've been leading up to it. Leading up to what? Yorkshire Ripper. What about the Yorkshire Ripper? Well, it's me. I've got to see his face. Do you know who I am? I'm the other buggy you nearly killed. That was Dick Holland. They've got him. They've got him! made one request. He wants to tell his missus himself. Right, sir. Take her through. been killing these women. What have you done that for? Then for fuck's sake, who sent the letters and tape? But he got bloody agitated when he were asked about Harrison. 
Andy had exactly the same reaction when we asked him about an attack in Halifax. Olive yeah. smelt. Mm -hmm. Got definite proof he did that. Oh, what's it matter, Dick? What matters is that some bastard somewhere sent a tape that I allowed myself to believe was from the Ripper, and women died as a result. Sir, Mr. Craig is here. Definitely him. Yes, sir. He's just admitted trying to decapitate Jordan with a hacksaw. Only a handful of senior officers and the murderer knew about that. And I found the hacksaw. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And is he a Jordy? No. I never wanted to go with the tape, Jim. But you did, George. My hand was forced. You know that. This is no time for recriminations. We'll have to let history decide if mistakes were made. Just so long as history records that whoever sent that tape has got blood in his hands, sir. Quite. But well, we should be celebrating. John? I ought to start paperwork, sir. I think you should, Holland. Dick. Thanks for calling me first. What else do you expect me to do, boss? I'll make you pay. I don't give a shine. arrested in Sheffield. Uh, he is being questioned in relation to the Yorkshire Ripper murders. It is anticipated he will appear before the court in Dewsbury tomorrow. Mr Gregory, uh, would it be fair to say then that the general hunt for the so-called Yorkshire Ripper is now being wound down? Right. Can you tell us whether he has a Geordie accent? Well, I, I can't tell you that as I've not heard him speak. Inspector, so you need to give us more details than this. Can you tell us where is this really the Ripper? Give us more details. What I can tell you is that we are absolutely delighted with developments at this stage. Absolutely delighted. Is he your truck driver, Mr. Really Conrad? delighted. George is delighted too. Give us a smile, George! Give us a smile! 